Hey, I'm Randy, and I'm the Cheap Audio Man. Welcome back to the internet. Here at the Cheap Audio Man, we don't feel like audio equipment should cost more than a 4,000 watt generator, which can keep your furnace running and power a PlayStation 3, a receiver, which powers speakers, and your television, so that you can enjoy Blu-ray movies during a vicious polar vortex that has debilitated your area during the winter. And these don't. They're the Fluence reference towers. Mm-hmm. And bonus, bonus review, the Fluence reference center channel. So grab a cup of coffee, sit down, and let's talk about this, these awesome Fluence speakers. Hi, today's sponsor is the soon-to-be Universal Pictures classic Hobbs and Shaw DVD or Blu-ray with digital copy, which I bought yesterday without ever watching the trailer. Yeah, if you want to have two hours of head-scratching fun, get yourself a copy of Hobbs and Shaw on Blu-ray. All right, these Fluence tower speakers, $600. All right, let's talk about some specs. Four drivers, two six and a half mid-range drivers out of glass woven fiber, a one inch soft dome, driver, soft dome tweeter, and then an eight inch downward firing woofer. They're specced at 35,000 hertz up to 25,000 hertz. 87 dB, 8 ohms. And the center channel, same tweeter, 1 inch soft dome, need a didinium driver, 2 5 and a quarter inch woven fiber woofers. They're spec down to 110 hertz. Okay, it's sealed though. It's sealed. You can hang it on a wall. And then up to 20,000 hertz. It's uh, 87 dB, eight ohms. Okay, so let's talk about soundstage and imaging. All right, so I ran these in two different configurations. One, I just kind of tested the towers as, I don't know, a music speaker. And then I tested the towers as a movie speaker. And then I tested the towers and the center as a movie speaker, okay? Imaging and soundstage were excellent. Frankly, when I put the towers into music mode in stereo um, I had to make sure that the center channel was off because it imaged so well. Soundstage is excellent. Killing Strangers by Marilyn Manson wrapped all the way around me in this big room and then also Wherever I May Roam by Metallica came way far right, okay? These soundstage and image great when I put the center channel on, and I generally don't listen to a center channel when I'm enjoying music. However, I just put it in Dolby Audio and uh, let the receiver do the rest, and I was very surprised how much I really enjoyed it. I, I listened to, um, it's the Korn Unplugged MTV. It's the one, it's like the second to last track where they have uh, the Japanese taiko drums. That was something else. Something else, okay? So whether you're using these for music or home theater, yeah, they're gonna image and soundstage pretty well. Very well. I couldn't believe it. And I just had them kind of facing forward, kind of like in the same position there and behind me, all right? So they don't need any massive crazy toe in to get them to sound awesome or soundstage and image awesome. I don't want to give away the sound. All right, let's talk about bass. All right, real easy on the bass. It's incredible, all right? 35 hertz, goes all the way down there. Intergalactic by Beastie Boys, incredible. Killing Strangers by Marilyn Manson, incredible. Never once did I feel like I needed a subwoofer with these. And that's saying something 
it's great. It's great. Maybe a bit too much in a small room. Okay. Medium room, fine. Actually, it's got nice presence that even at low volumes, great presence at low volumes. If you don't have the money for a sub, all right, or you already have a sub and don't want to get fancy, these are fantastic. Movies, I watched this with Hobbs and Shaw and also Prometheus, which Prometheus is a great movie. Anyway, I ran them without a sub. Never once missed it, all right? Obviously, it wasn't as earth-shaking, shattering, moving, punchy in your duodenum like a subwoofer can do, but there's good. I never felt like I needed a subwoofer with these, okay? Center channel, you're going to need a subwoofer. They make no bass. They go down to about 110 hertz, okay? So it's sealed. It makes sense, all right? Let's talk about mid-range. Mid-range on these is full. It has body. Maybe likes a little detail. Okay. King of Pain, Alan Alanis Morissette off the MTV Unplugged record. She sounded great. She had vo full body. A little bit of the detail is lacking. Okay. There will be time. Mumford and Sons. Very, very pleasing mid-range. Dumb by Nirvana. The acoustic guitars sounded great. Very full. Lacks a bit of detail for music. Okay? For movies, again, sounded great. Couldn't tell any difference. All right? Let's talk about travel. Treble on these is hmm, a bit rolled off, which is fine. The reason why it's fine is because these give a great structure for tweaking, all right? So it's detailed. It's not as like clear as a lot of the other speakers I've heard, like the Yamo uh, concert series, like the SVS Prime series. Um, obviously the Emotiva B1 Plus T0, not as detailed, okay? But the mid-range on these speakers is so good and chances are these are going to be hooked up to either an AV receiver or probably an integrated amp with tone controls. And I bumped the EQ on my AV receiver at 4K up 2 dB and I got all the clarity and detail I wanted. Okay, trouble's fine. It's, it's great, okay? These things are built like tanks, all right? What are my final thoughts? Final thoughts are this speaker is a fantastic value. They look great. They move a massive amount of air. The bass is quite full and very pleasing. It ain't neutral, okay? It's not. So if you are like 80% music and 20% movies, uh, unless you really like that sound, may not be the speaker for you. It's not neutral, okay? It's thick, it's robust, like Highway to Hell by ACDC. Mm. Gonna punch you in the jaw like an angry old man who lost his keys in a drain pipe and you made fun of him. But it turns out like he was a golden glove boxer, like in the Navy, and he didn't know about that. And he hits you in the side of the head with a, a right, right hand. And it shocks you because he's so old and feeble, yet now you can't see straight. I don't even know what we're talking about. Final thoughts on the on the Fluence Towers. They're great. If you are 50-50, get these. All right, $600 gives you basically a full range experience. Eh, lacking a little bit on the low end. Never once did I feel like I needed a subwoofer. All right, when I added the center channel to these, I had to tweak it a bit, okay? 
So I had to tweak uh, the distances, which you should do anyway on an AV receiver when you're setting up new. So I had to tweak the distances, tweak the crossovers, obviously, and I just ran the centers full range. Or not the center, the towers full range. And the center channel, you know, I had to tweak that crossover. But here's the thing. When you're watching movies, if it's possible, you need to get the center up close to where the tweeter level is on the towers. I did notice, and I moved it around, and it's not just where it's placed right now. I, I had it moved around a bit. The closer I could get it to the tweeter height of the towers, the better the dialogue was. When I didn't have them, when I had them farther apart, and someone was talking off screen or whatever, you could tell that the, their voice went up there. Okay, so it didn't seem seamless, all right? But again, just best practices is to you know run your room correction and try to get that center channel up to where your tweeter level is. They're tall speakers, so that might be mm, challenging, but I will say when I got them within about a foot of one another, I couldn't really tell the difference. And I got the, the levels balanced, I couldn't really tell the difference. All right, the center channel is $150. Yeah, for $150 is pretty awesome. Granted, it only goes down to 110, but it is sealed. You can hang it on a wall. It's got keyhole hangers on the wall. All right, these are fantastic. I also did uh, the reference bookshelves. Fluence was nice enough to send all of these to me. They never asked me what to say and tell me what to say or influence me in any way. I like it. Okay, this is a hmm, foundation. Again, very similar messaging that I had on the bookshelves. You can, you can change this. I will say that the towers are a little bit more lively on top than the bookshelves, okay? For music, if you're just running it flat or whatever, but these speakers give you the raw material to create what you love. With an AV receiver, $600 for the towers, 150, now you're at 750, and I think the, uh, the bookshelves are less than 200, so for less than $950, you just add a sub, which maybe you already have, and you don't even need to add a sub. You have a fantastic home theater system, all right? And a really enjoyable music. I couldn't believe how much I enjoyed music when I was running Dolby Audio. Because I'm like, I'm a snobbish two-channel guy. Oh, no. It's got to come out of just two speakers. No. They're awesome. It's awesome. I really enjoyed music with the $150 center channel. It was great. That was great. So, if you want to support the channel in the description, the patreon.com slash cheapaudioman is there. You can also use any of my links, which I get a referral fee for. Okay? Also, you can sign up for Amazon HD music for free. Link in the description. Click on the link. Scroll down to the bottom. Click try HD. And I get you get three months free of Amazon HD. I get a couple of dollars. My test tracks are also in there so you can listen to your speakers and hear what, what I'm pointing out and you can see if I'm an idiot or not. All right. So with all that said, thanks for, thanks for coming to the internet again today into my living room. And uh, go, don't binge watch Netflix and definitely don't watch Hobbs and Shaw. Uh, binge listen to your favorite streaming service and fill your soul with happiness.